Hey everyone, welcome to study acupuncture with me. I'm your host Richard Lai and I am a physical therapist and an acupuncturist. On this channel I'll be sharing with you what you wish you learned in school. I'm talking the best tips and tricks to being prepared for not only the national board exams but also real life clinical application. This is a one-stop shop for all things study related so you've got nothing to lose. So click subscribe right now. You do not want to miss any of these videos. Without further ado, let's study. All right, so welcome back to another episode of Study Acupuncture with me. This is episode number two. Today we're going to be going over the brachial plexus as it relates to the NCCAOM. So the brachial plexus is something that everyone hates to study. Uh, one of the mnemonics that we all learn is real therapists drink cold and then the branches are beer. So brachial plexus has roots that come off the spinal cord. We have C5, C6, C7, C8, T1. Then we have trunk. We have superior, middle, and inferior. And then we have this gaggle of divisions that go either anteriorly or posteriorly, which turn into cords, lateral, posterior, and medial cord. So the thing with anything in the body, they named it for its either location or its function. So if we pull up So what I want to do is I want to pull up this app that I have. And when I think brachial plexus, I think location wise. We have the roots that come off the spinal cord, C5, C6, C7, C8, T1, right? Immediately as it emerges, it passes between the anterior and middle scalene, right here, right, and right here. There we have our superior, middle, and inferior trunks, right? So you can see like where it's located in the body. This is a superior trunk. This is a middle. It's in the middle. And this one's inferior trunk, right? Behind the clavicle here is where we have that gaggle of anterior posterior divisions, right? So we have a lot of divisions here that either go anterior or posteriorly. These divisions eventually turn into the cords. And now here is where location really comes into play, right? So we do have the lateral cord, right? Which goes laterally, right? We have a posterior cord that goes posterior through the arm. And then we have a medial cord that stays medially, right? So the lateral cord eventually turns into the musculocutaneous nerve, right? Which innervates the, the muscles that make a bicep, right? That makes a muscle, right? And then the posterior cord Right, goes posteriorly, turns into the axillary nerve, right? And it goes even more posteriorly. Let's see if I can get it here. Goes more posteriorly and turns into the radial nerve, right? And the radial nerve is a posterior nerve that runs down the back of your arm and your forearm. And then we have the medial cord, which runs medially, turning into the ulnar nerve, and then connecting with the lateral cord and the medial cord. What does it turn into? It turns into the median nerve, right, which runs down your forearm and into your hand. So brachial plexus is really just named by location. As soon as it comes out, as roots and goes in between the anterior and middle scalene. You see here a superior, middle, and inferior trunk. This one's on top, this one's on middle, in the middle, and this one is at the bottom. Then you see this gaggle of divisions that go anterior and posterior. And again, location-wise, lateral cord goes laterally and turns into the musculocutaneous nerve, right? Posterior cord goes posteriorly and turns into the axillary nerve and the radial nerve, which goes down the back of the arm. 
and then the medial cord goes medially, turns into the ulnar node, right? And then as it goes down, lateral cord and medial cord eventually come together to become the median nerve. This is another schematic of the brachial plexus that I find very useful just because um, this one has all the muscles that the branches innervate. So for example, muscular cutaneous, right? There's corporal brachialis, brachialis, biceps, axillary, you know, it's, we know that it comes off the posterior cord. So it innervates things like the deltoid and the teres minor. Lateral cord and medial cord come together eventually to turn into median nerve. Right, which innervates a lot of the muscles in the forearm. Posterior cord goes down the back of the arm, right? So there's innervation to the triceps, right, and the posterior compartment of the forearm, your wrist extensors. Medial cord runs medially along the arm, right, which turns into the ulnar nerve, which innervates things like the flexor carpi ulnaris. Quick overview of the forearm muscles, the anterior compartment of your forearm. There's three layers of muscles, superficial, intermediate, and deep, right? The action of these muscles is that they flex, they flex the wrist and the fingers, and they perform pronation. So from a superficial stance, <clears throat> in the superficial compartment, there's an easy mnemonic to memorize the superficial compartment is pass, fail, pass, fail. They have a common origin, which is your medial epicondyle. They have a common origin, which is your medial epicondyle. So first you have your pronator teres, then flexor carpi radialis, then palmaris longus, which goes over this flexor retinaculum, and then you have flexor carpi ulnaris, which is the most medial muscle. All of it is innervated by median nerve except ulnaris. We know that the medial cord comes down, becomes ulnar nerve, and innervates the flexor carpi ulnaris. You go a little deeper, we have the intermediate layer, which has flexor digitorum superficialis. This is innervated by the median nerve, and it actually inserts on the middle phalanges of the four fingers. What goes all the way to the distal phalanges, uh, the distal joint, is the flexor digitorum profundus. So this one goes all the way to your DIPs and it flexes at your DIP. And half of this is innervated by ulnar nerve, half of these is innervated by median nerve. If you go to the posterior compartment, right, this is the back of your arm. These are your extensor muscles, so it does extension at the wrist and the fingers. Back of the arm, therefore, posterior cord, what does it turn into? It turns into the radial nerve. So we have a superficial layer. So we have brachial radialis, extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis, extensor digitorum communicus, right, extensor digiti minimi, extensor carpi ulnaris, and we have anconius muscle, this tiny muscle there. These are all innervated by the radial nerve. Then we have deep muscles. We have the supinator, abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, extensor pollicis longus, and extensor indicus. Again, like I said before, you know, it's all named for what it does, you know, where it goes to. This is a surface anatomy picture of the anatomical snuff box. This is high yield on our NCC AOM board exam. So we have the extensor pollicis longus tendon, the extensor pollicis brevis tendon, and then we have abductor pollicis longus tendon. Inside we have the radial artery. You know, this is where LI5 is. So high yield question on the NCC AOM is what could be punctured if you insert into LI5? So we have radial nerve, superficial radial nerve, and radial artery. We also have cephalic vein. All right, so next topic is dermatomes. Dermatomes are high yield on the bioscience board exam. And an example of a question would be, patient has pain on their thumb. 
what dermatome is most likely affected? So the answer to that would be C6. A dermatome is basically an area of skin that's supplied by uh, the nerves from a single spinal root. So we saw before in the brachial plexus that off of the spinal cord, the spinal nerves that come out, the root of C5, for example, would supply the area of skin, um, you know, anterior lateral shoulder area. Um, and C6 uh, spinal root would supply your thumb. And C7 would supply area around your middle finger, and C8 your little finger. Um, and it's easiest just to memorize it by location, C5, anterior lateral shoulder, C6, <coughs> going all the way down to the thumb, C7, middle finger, C8, little finger, T1, this medial portion of your arm. That's dermatome. Another aspect of the nerves are cutaneous innervations. So the brachial plexus ends in branches. These branches innervate certain areas of skin. For example, this is the right side here. We have the posterior um, arm, arm and forearm. So this red area is radial nerve. You know, the radial nerve supplies this area of skin through the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm, right? And the inferior lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm, posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm. These are lower yield examples on the um, board exam, but once you get down to the hand, that's where it's a little more high yield. So median nerve, for example, is this yellow portion. This is the palmar aspect, this is the dorsal aspect, and in the palmar aspect, the thumb, index, and lateral half of the ring finger would be affected when there's median nerve injury. So question could be, patient has numbness on the lateral half of the ring finger, which nerve is most likely involved? Is it A, radial nerve? Is it B, ulnar? Is it C, median? Is it D, musculocutaneous? No, you would say, oh, it's lateral half of the ring finger. It is median nerve. In the dorsal aspect, it's the distal third of the index, middle, and half of the ring finger. So see that half of the ring finger, that's the high yield part that they could ask about. So lateral half of the ring finger is numb or pain, etc. Median nerve involvement. Now if they say medial half of the ring finger, then you're thinking ulnar nerve, right? So a patient comes in and they're like, you know, whenever I rest my elbow on the window when I'm driving, uh, my pinky goes numb. I don't know why. It's a weird condition that I have. And you're like, well, no, that's because you are cutting off the ulnar nerve. And the ulnar nerve supplies, you know, your medial forearm and the pinky and medial half of your ring finger. Next is radial. Radial nerve is the dorsum of the hand, the lateral two thirds. The dorsum and lateral aspect of the thumb and it says the proximal two-thirds of the dorsum of the index, middle, and half of the ring finger. So this ring finger, you know, is a junction on the dorsum of three, of the radial nerve, of the ulnar nerve, and the median nerve. So that was episode two of Study Acupuncture with me. I hope that you enjoyed the content. Please don't forget to subscribe below and find us on Facebook and Instagram, as well as Twitter, at Study Acupuncture with Me. If you have any requests for any subjects, um, comment below, or find us on Instagram, write a comment. We'll definitely reply to everything, and we'll see you on the next episode.